This episode was recorded 4th of April 2019. I'm the Jolly Monkey, he's Sven the Crusader, and this is... Q&A! If you were a story protagonist, what character traits would you have? Weapons? Abilities? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, this is a dangerous question to ask role players. <laughs> yeah. And also sort of an awkward one, because... Ooh, I'm gonna have to come up with a lot of stuff right on the spot, because I haven't actually thought of it in that much depth yet. I just do know that, at least according to one survey I took, I would be a sorcerer. Nice. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of an awkward question, because even if we were just to limit down the times that when we play D&D, some of the streams you can see on MVL's channel, oh, um, back in the day where we made text roleplay, we've had, like, so many different characters we play. so even if we were just playing ourselves, I've done it twice. Once for a webcomic I made called Cyber Realm way back in the day, which was, if, looking back at it, he was more... The character was more or less like a typical Sony protagonist with some of my sense of humor in there. But um, his abilities were essentially quick draw, katana sword play, and energy blasts. And uh, admittedly, I did like some of the attacks that came up with, such as lightning dash, where he pretty much just surrounded himself with energy and shot straight forward. And his energy attacks, which I believe were spirit gatling and spirit shotgun off the top of my head. Oh man, yeah. It's been so long since we talked about that series. Fond, fond memories. I also like those abilities, too. And, uh, I'll leave this out of context because it's funnier that way. A line that I came up with <laughs> for one ability. Everyone else gets a cool super and I get deviant art. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I should also mention, as kind of a joke, because, um, at the time I went by the name Anima Sword, and then I looked it up and realized, oh... Anima also means another thing. I could use this for a joke, so he had a gender bent super form. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Eat your heart out, Kishimoto. Admittedly, it might be kind of an awkward joke knowing what I know about transgenderism. In which case, uh, I apologize to any transgender people in the audience. But um... Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, at the time it seemed like a good idea. And I really do want to use that line for in another context. I don't yeah. know why I'm proud of that line, but I am. I mean, no, it's a good line. There is a hell of a lot of TG stuff on here, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, I mean, I do still like the design of that form, but it, it is still thinking about the knowing what I know now. I probably should have been more sensitive about it. It's just something you have to keep in mind going forward. It's like Matt Mercer when um, he was having a conversation about who would voice what character in the upcoming Critical Role animation, and he freely admitted that he means no harm in wanting to voice Gilmore because it is his baby, but he also understands that some people may want people of colour to be played by people of colour in voice acting, which I totally get, even though it wouldn't really do that much harm for him to play Gilmore, I guess. Yeah, it's not... In that instance, it's not like... Say Scarlet Johansson in Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> oh, um, God. I love Scar jo, but that was a disaster. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I feel where you're coming from with that. And because we're in Tangent City now, insert Suplex <laughs> City bitch joke here. Um, <laughs> I'll reroute the conversation to say, honestly, I feel like if I were a character in a story, in a fantasy story, I would want to roll with the sorcerer thing, because they tend to be the snarkiest, most extra class there is. <laughs> and honestly, I really love the idea of drawing my powers from being related to a friggin' dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that definitely, I, I can see the appeal of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I also did think about what powers the Johnny Monkey avatar would have, because back in the um, day when um, I was thinking of storylines for the review shows, I did actually come up with stuff. Like, uh, I switched between wanting to give my little monkey guy original attacks. I was also experimenting with the idea that they would use video game abilities, but would cross them. One of his attacks was to cross a Fire Emblem skill with a Street Fighter move to create Aoife Sure You Can. But, um... <laughs> That is the coolest <laughs> phrase I've heard all month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the one thing that would be consistent is dual-wielding swords, because, well, 
it's me. That's how I fight in real life, so... It's true, I've heard the stories. And also the story of how you took an arrow in the knee. But that's for another time. <laughs> so yeah, I have thought about uh, what kind of abilities I would give them. And also, because of wrestling, I've also thought about giving them luchador moves. But to answer the question, we thought about it a lot, is what I'm trying to say. And it could take a while to go over the whole list of abilities. Yeah, because... The thing is, there's so much to work with, but my base answer is, yeah, I want to be a sorcerer, I want to be extra and snarky, and be able to say, as two of my former party members have said, I'm a dragon. (laughs) Uh, That's totally fair. And I have plenty of ideas. The only reason I haven't thought about finalizing them is because... uh, I have thought about ideas of uh, maybe to, uh, to sell it once we're all doing a final battle video where Joni takes on Richard and the like, but I've always worried about that being incredibly self-indulgent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can be fun, and I don't necessarily blame an artist for doing it, but it's always that worry. If you would like us to answer your questions, either leave them in the comments or send them to me via Twitter with the hashtag Q&A. I've been the Jello Monkey, and until next time, cheerio.